All right, so um, here we are. This is sort of time reversed. Uh, Dhruvadita has already given you an uh, 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 introduction or rather the later part of what would be. So this is going, you have to imagine this is pre Dhruvadita. That's the way it was designed anyway. So, all right, um, what I'm uh, going to talk about um, are things which you have already seen and maybe in some details and with some uh, more focus on um, uh, the calculational aspect, uh, what uh, can be done or rather what can be honestly done and what can't be done, which let's say maybe all of it. Um, so anyway, it's um, uh, what we are talking about is uh, homogeneous isotropic turbulence, which is a fluid flow with no uh, recognizable pattern. And the, uh, therefore, the recognizing, no recognizing pattern, recognizable pattern obviously means something is amiss with the uh, predictability. And uh, the striking characteristic, therefore, is that the velocity field is some random function of space and time. And the goal would be to find if that is what you claim, then the question is, what is the distribution, underlying distribution? And that turns out to be very difficult. And so what you settle for is something uh, smaller, um, uh, much um, uh, um, uh, lower level, which is, uh, could I get some class of um, uh, moments? And the class of moments that we talk about uh, is what you heard from Dhruvadito a few minutes ago, uh, that it velocity difference between two neighboring points uh, raised to the power n and the average value of that. And can I get a handle on that? And this is the customary uh, Leonardo da Vinci drawing, which uh, uh, you are supposed to show. And here is the drawing which shows vortices within vortices within vortices and so on. And that it is self-similar if you blow up the picture, um, then uh, a small vortex over there looks like the whole. Uh, so, all right. So uh, in that end, which you saw a minute ago, um, uh, you now when it comes to being realistic, you start, you do n equal to two. So n equal to two is not bad because it is, I mean, V square after all, and that's related to the energy. And so you take the kinetic energy per unit mass and define the total energy in this fashion as a sum over all wave numbers. And writing it in this fashion over here, it is this EK is what one calls the energy spectrum. That's the definition. When we talk about the energy spectrum, that is what we mean. And obviously in a d-dimensional space, it can be written as V square by two integrated over. If it is in momentum space, a wave number space, that is, it is this quantity. And the question is, this energy spectrum, what determines it? The obvious answer is that it has to be determined by the dynamics. And what is the dynamics? It's Navier-Stokes equation for an incompressible fluid, which is what our um, uh, uh, approximation will be, which means the velocities are all much smaller than the speed of sound. So not a bad approximation really in uh, everyday life in um, um, very many situa most situations. And so here is uh, Navier-Stokes equation, which uh, you already had a pretty um, good dose of that uh, the acceleration on this left-hand side, the local time change and the um, uh, uh, carrying along of the fluid, the advective term over here, pressure gradient and the viscous dissipation and an external force which keeps the uh, system going because we will be talking about a steady state which is a non-equilibrium um, um, uh, steady state. And that's the incompressibility uh, condition over here. So, uh, well, uh, there is an energy budget 
uh, you look at, you multiply this equation uh, by um, uh, velocity, V alpha, integrate, and you get the energy budget, the advective term integrates out to zero, and you have the uh, uh, derivative of the energy is this negative term over here, and uh, uh, <coughs> V alpha derivative squared, and the driving force giving you a contribution from over here. And as you can see that this um, uh, chap, um, uh, or even if you can't, um, uh, it's not obvious, it will be, it should be obvious because of what you heard an hour ago, that this viscosity operates at molecular scales and the derivative over here has a length scale in the denominator. So it is all very uh, um, uh, important in the uh, low, in a, uh, low uh, length scales. And this one over here, where you are actually stirring the fluid and uh, pumping in energy, uh, operates at macro scales. So one at molecular scales and one at um, uh, uh, macro scales. And your rate of the input, which is this uh, over here, if that equals the rate of dissipation by this term over here, you have a zero um, uh, for the left-hand side, and that is your non-equilibrium steady state. And the scales are determined by viscosity and uh, the rate at which energy, um, um, uh, the, uh, uh, is uh, being transferred. And um, so uh, this is epsilon. And here you are, the small scale out of viscosity and um, uh, the energy um, uh, uh, transfer and the large scale once again out of that. But now uh, it is, um, uh, has this form. So this is the, uh, 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 sorry, it's a mean um, average, um, a mean velocity V bar, and uh, uh, that's the uh, epsilon, that's the mean velocity. Uh, so here is the large length scale, and here is the, so this mean velocity over here gets related to the, uh, you do a little this and that, and the ratio of the viscosity enters, and the ratio of this is Reynolds number to the power three quarter. So if you are, Reynolds number is V average times length scale divided by um, uh, the viscosity. So if that is very big, you have a, um, um, a, a, a large uh, scale where you can imagine that at the small scales, the energy is being dissipated at these larger scales. It is being, the stirring mechanism is putting in energy into the system, getting dissipated at the short length scales. And therefore, uh, in between, there is a large length scale where essentially distance, where uh, energy is being simply transferred, that what you are stirring in is getting dissipated and uh, the rate at which the dissipation and stirring happens is equal, and therefore the rate at which it is being transferred is also uh, remains, the, uh, remains constant, and same as what is being input and what is uh, uh, put in and what is being dissipated, and that sets up the Kolmogorov argument. So the existence of this large ratio of the scales of input and the scales of dissipation, uh, which is ensured at a large Reynolds number, sets up the Kolmogorov argument, and um, which um, uh, is essentially what uh, that the e, uh, e of k that we saw goes as k to the power minus five thirds. And here is one of the many pictures of uh, numerous, uh, numerical simulation. Here is the E of K, and here is uh, K over here. And you see a pretty nice slope of five by three, which is what you will be seeing a minute later on the scale. So in this inertial range over here, um, uh, you translate this into wave vector space, and the L corresponds um, uh, to some um, uh, K zero, which is a small wave number. And then it is a large wave number over here where the dissipation is powerful, small wave number where you are putting energy in the system. 
and the k's that you are interested in lie in between. Energy spectrum is this, and the energy is determined by uh, the um, uh, wave number and epsilon, which is everything. It is the input rate, it is the dissipation rate, it is the transfer rate, and then you do a dimensional analysis uh, based on the and outcomes. Yes. So epsilon to the power two by three, k to the power minus five by three, with a constant c, that is Kolmogorov for you. So this is um, um, uh, uh, <coughs> where one is. And so now what happens if you want to um, uh, look at um, uh, the um, uh, uh, same uh, thing in uh, coordinate space? Well, coordinate space, you look at it, you carry out the same arg um, um, uh, analysis that uh, it is uh, uh, the difference of the low, uh, neighboring uh, velocities raised to the power n, and uh, to, um, uh, th uh, that uh, goes as epsilon to the power n by three, r to the power n by three, with a coefficient c of n for every n. And uh, all the c's are supposed to be universal constants. Now for n equal to three, Actually, you have an exact result. Uh, uh, Kolmogorov proved this, that C of three is minus four by five. So you have an, an in all of 3D turbulence, that's the uh, only exact result as far as I know. So it is very important that, and which you saw in uh, Dhrubaditya's talk um, in the morning. So um, uh, there, that's, uh, um, uh, that, that's that. And now, well, n equal to two, n equal to two, you get this, as we said, it's ek is this over here, and c is supposed to be, and the corresponding uh, difference um, uh, scales as r to the power uh, uh, two by three. You have real and uh, numerical experiments uh, in uh, d equal to three. Uh, you seem to get a very nice k to the power uh, minus five by three with a constant which, um, uh, as I understand it, uh, the various uh, computations that I've seen, uh, they sort of cluster around 1.7. It is not that uh, uh, somebody says that co very confidently that C is this and it can't be anything else. So uh, keep that in mind, uh, that while there is not much doubt about the uh, five by three being a good answer, the C being a universal constant is a little bit here. All right. Um, the, uh, now, the, over here, you see uh, the, it's n by 3. And I'm going to talk about a special case, which is n equal to 6. So n equal to 6, I, um, which means, once again, that this, uh, if I uh, Look at um, the, uh, it is two factors of n equal to three. So you look at this and uh, uh, this is n equal to three and take another n equal to three that gives you n equal to six. And so uh, you, now what is an n equal to three? That is this v cubed and v cubed as you saw um, once again uh, uh, early on, that v cubed um, divided v squared over t is the energy transfer rate. So, so ddt of v squared, so that is the energy tra uh, transfer. And then in terms of t, which is once again r over v, it is v over r. So this epsilon over r can be con uh, considered as v over r. And in accordance with Kolmogorov uh, thing, v cubed v cubed is like r squared, which means that the um, uh, energy um, uh, over here is uh, uh, divide out by r squared here. It is the energy energy, and therefore energy energy is r to the power zero, which is uh, like a constant. But this two, the point is, this is where the deviation from Kolmogorov 
uh, as I have talked about till now comes in, that the day, it, this is not really R square and the data um, uh, experimental is more like R to the power 1.8 and the correspondingly therefore the epsilon, the energy, local energy transfer rate correlation is not a constant, but it is R raised to the power some small exponent mu with a minus sign. And this deviation from the Kolmogorov phenomenology, um, uh, which uh, is uh, what is called intermittency. And uh, for this particular case of n equal to six, um, uh, which is this epsilon, epsilon, v cubed, v cubed uh, correlation or epsilon, epsilon correlation, it has, it is important, uh, uh, at least my, um, and, um, uh, and feeling on that is that it is actually more vital than um, most because it uh, you can easily relate it to the the this third order uh, correlation you can easily relate it to some obvious physical quantity which is a part of the um, uh, phenomenology which is the energy transfer rate. So this mu um, not being zero uh, is um, a big uh, departure and uh, it, it would be um, uh, 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 nice if one were to be able to um, uh, get a, a, a calculation, a real calculation for this mu over here. Um, um, uh, 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 while the higher moments, which all the moments which Dhruva uh, talked about are very important. Uh, in, uh, and uh, you can also imagine that the higher you go, uh, the calculation, actual calculation um, uh, would become very difficult. Uh, but with this, there should still be some hope that the mu might actually from the hydrodynamic calculation, meaning uh, uh, from the hydrodynamic equations, doing something which is um, standard way of uh, doing calculations uh, and uh, one should have a uh, um, low order um, uh, non-zero mu. Um, but any, uh, so anyway, that's where uh, one is headed. When I reach that stage, you know the talk is over. So um, uh, anyway, so what, what is this Kolmogorov 1941? What you are doing is essentially you are ignoring the fluctuations in the uh, energy transfer rate. So maybe it is what one calls a mean field theory in critical phenomena. And um, therefore, um, uh, uh, that seems also uh, like the attitude of Kolmogorov and Obukov in 1962, uh, where what they did was that they um, postulated a distribution um, uh, for the transfer rate, a log normal distribution. So um, uh, with uh, mean and then uh, the, uh, you calculated with the, uh, once you have the log, uh, postulated the distribution, you can calculate the uh, expectation values. And uh, once what you do uh, is you compare with the exact result of P equal to three and establish uh, this um, uh, average uh, epsilon and go, get to know all the moments in terms of R and epsilon. The low order moments work out reasonably well at higher orders, you have a problem, um, uh, which is once again quite strong. All right, so now um, uh, to actually, um, uh, how in the world uh, does one do this? If you are not doing it numerically, then what options do you have? So we have to go back to this Navier-Stokes equation once again. And here we, uh, it is in, uh, Fourier space. That's my uh, DDT. Here is the nonlinear term. That's the viscous dissipation. And here is the external forcing. This uh, uh, M, which is the vertex, is the gradient. And therefore, it is the K, 
So it is the uh, uh, projection. This is where uh, the algebra works out. Here is the K multiplied by a projection operator. And then uh, there is this noise um, uh, random forcing and you have to pr uh, prescribe some uh, distribution and the distribution is taken uh, to be a Gaussian distribution over here. So, who's, uh, the, so you specify the two point correlation and you um, have them all. And the two point correlation is given by uh, delta function in T, delta function in K and K prime and a projection operator because that, and some function f of k. So that's the, that's the model. That's the model. If you are going to do any calculation, that's the model that you set up. Well, 63, uh, a long paper in Annals of Physics, Wilde did all the diagrammatics of this uh, very thoroughly. And uh, that. Now, <clears throat> obviously, the uh, calculations, we can set up the model, write down what all the relevant diagrams are and what, but then uh, making headway, once again, is a, a problematic situation. Um, 78, De Dominicis and Martin, um, uh, uh, worked with a situation where they put in a particular form for this f of k, a form which looks like this, 4 minus d minus, this is the dimensionality of space, and y is a parameter that they introduced to make calculation somewhat um, transparent and simpler. Uh, so uh, that, that, that's for now. Uh, this is um, uh, all that I'm going to say. And uh, it is uh, um, uh, towards the end that we'll re return to this. But before coming um, uh, the, uh, before returning to this, let me uh, clarify how exactly, what exactly is the procedure for working with this thing over here? And then uh, what kind of problems we can we run into and what kind of uh, help one can get from this over here and where does it take us at the end of the day. So, all right. The only thing, if you are not going to be able to calculate things exactly, you have to do a perturbation theory. So, perturbation theory is what um, uh, we will talk about. So this is essentially what uh, you will find in Wild 1963 and uh, made a little, let's say, recast in a slightly uh, modern language, uh, which is uh, not really uh, a great, uh, 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 but it makes uh, reading a little easier, that's all. So, zero, so you want to do it, the perturbation theory in the Fourier space in terms of wave number and in terms of the frequency. So the zeroth order dynamics is this over here. It's V zero and uh, it's minus I omega plus mu K square. That is the del del T, that is the viscous dissipation. And here is the drive. You introduce the response function which is, I change the external forcing a bit, and how does the velocity change? That is the response function g of k omega. And you can see the answer at the zeroth order from here. It is just one over <coughs> del v del alpha, one over one, and so uh, you don't want it in the denominator easier. Life is easier if you have it in the numerator. So you work with g0 inverse, which is the um, uh, right, uh, which is the convenient thing to do uh, because of uh, the diagram, the way diagrammatics unfold. So, all right, you go to the next order. You go to the next order, and well, now you have the nonlinear term come into play. There were two v's over there, and if I want the first order v one over here, I need to have both of them at the zeroth order. But this will contribute nothing to the response function because you try to take a derivative with respect to f over here, 
you pick up and take an average value. You pick up one derivative over here and do an average value. That is a, but then you have left, you are left with one V over here, which is hanging. And when you have taken the expectation value, it is zero. So you get no contribution at the, this order. So the non-zero contribution comes at the next order, which where you have the second order V, and then on the right-hand side, it has to be one first order V and one zeroth order V. Remember the BF, when it was one over here, there were two zeros here. Now it's two over here and it's one and zero. And then uh, there is uh, this plus shows that there is also a zero and one, but they give the same kind of contribution. Now, if you take a derivative with respect to F and take an average, see we, over here, you have the V1 will give you two V zeros, uh, two V zeros and one of them goes with the F and you are left with two more. So three V zeros, one goes in taking a derivative with respect to F that is gone as a response. And then there are two Vs left and now their correlation is non-zero. So you are going to get an answer. So there is going to be an answer at this um, uh, level. There is going to be a change in the G zero inverse. That change is the new G, the full G, G of K omega. And here is the corresponding uh, Dyson equation, which one always um, uh, gets in any kind of perturbation theory, that G inverse full is G zero inverse for the quadratic theory, the linear theory, and plus uh, it's generally comes with a minus, and uh, the, uh, I have changed the sign per purposely over here, because uh, uh, that uh, the zeroth order form is minus i mu omega plus mu k squared. And if I change the sign over here from the traditional negative to a positive, I can write that as a mu effective k and omega k squared, so that this mu effective is like a dressed viscosity. It is changing the bare viscosity, the real physical viscosity that the fluid has to because of this turbulent fluctuations an effective viscosity, which gives you a relaxation rate, which is this, and that's the relaxation rate uh, which you pick up. Mu k squared is the viscous relaxation rate simply because of the molecular viscosity of the liquid. And what does this gamma k of omega look like? Well, <clears throat> you pick it up from here. There, is, uh, there are going to be two factors of m because the v1 carries, uh, v1 carries uh, m over here. So there is going to be, once you substitute, uh, there are going to be two factors of m. Here they are. V1 also brings in a g. That's where this is. And it gives you a V0. You correlate. And that is what you have over here. So that's the answer for this gamma k of omega. Two m's, a g, and a c. And uh, that is what one would call a one loop answer. It is with by writing, it would be a exact one loop, a real one loop would have a subscript zero over here and a subscript zero over here. Uh, that really in this game is not going to take you anywhere. So you do the traditional dressing. So you uh, instead of the G zero, the zeroth order G, you put a G over here. And uh, 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 instead of the uh, uh, C0, you put a C over here. And so this cap that you have is answer is what one would call a dressed one loop. So a one loop answer, a, a response function, a one part of the loop, a correlator, the other part of the loop, and you are using a full dressed fun full um, uh, correlator and a full response function. Uh, that um, uh, obviously, uh, so which is in, if you draw uh, pictures, this is, uh, if this is your G and this over here 
is your C. These, this is the class of diagrams which I'm looking at. You have taken a full G here and a full C here. It is an approximation because what you may, whatever, however you may dress it, because there could have been this line over here giving you two more lines and uh, this giving you a, a, a line as well. And uh, you pick up a correlation here and there, the, what you are looking at right now is something that you have an interaction here, you get two lines and you have an uh, interaction uh, here with two lines. These two make a correlator, C, this makes a G, and this goes out and meets the um, uh, other V that is, so there was a V here and a V here, and they are joined by this, which you see over there, and you dress them and get a G and C, which is where it is. So, but the point is that there would be diagrams which would look like this and this. So there is a three-point interaction here, there's a three-point interaction here, and then there is this. And this class is not included. So while this has an infinite number of diagrams, this class over here, it starts with this, and let's put a double line for, so it starts with this, and then you imagine that this line over here is replaced by, let's say, another one of these over here that there you put in something which looks like this and that you add that on and you add every such in, uh, in a thing on and you get this dress chap and this over here. And that is what one means by dressing it, uh, the one loop graph, and this is the answer. But it is an approximation because things, why, things could have happened uh, with this chap over here, uh, which uh, does not change the scaling, but changes the numbers, any real numbers that you can get uh, are uh, going to be uh, suspect. But at least, I mean, it is a, a step which ev everyone can take very easily and get going. All right. So now uh, the, you ask the question that is there a scaling solution? So you um, uh, look for uh, a scaling solution, which means that this relaxation rate that I had has scales as k to the power z. And then there is, I mean, it is after all a function of omega. So there is a scaling function where, uh, associated with that. And now there is the other part, the zero frequency relaxation rate is given by this. The other player, which is the correlator, looks like this, and it is a G and a G and F, which is the uh, correlation between the two noises. So G inverse, if you now make the approximation that the bare viscosity the bare viscosity contributes very little. So this, um, there is going to be a region, we are in the Kolmogorov region. This is going to be the dominant player. If you make that statement, then you can drop the um, uh, uh, mu and here you are that the G inverse is just the relaxation rate which you calculate out of this perturbation theory and there we are. So the equal time uh, correlator scales accordingly like this, and you have an, uh, an uh, approximately equal here uh, because I have uh, ignored combinatorial factors. So gamma of K, the zero frequency relaxation rate is this integral, and you now match powers of K. The CK integral is K, K to the power minus M, the gamma k, as we said, is k to the power z. And here you can match the g is 1 over gamma. So you have a 1 over k to the power z, a k to the power z here. So that's 2z. And then you have a 1 over m, because that is the 1 over m coming from this part. 
and this part over here gives a one over M. So it goes there. So two Z plus M. And what are you are left with is this D, which is uh, from here and M and M gives you. A and so you have the relation that two Z plus M is equal to D plus two. M is the correlation function power and Z is the uh, relaxation rate. But to find Z and M, we need another condition. And this is the energy transfer. So we'll use this as the condition that the energy transfer rate is a constant. So the energy transfer rate, you play the same game. You have the energy transfer rate given by this, and uh, you take a DDT, and you get this and a plus another which term which comes from this and uh, multiplied by a derivative of this and both taken together give you uh, <coughs> uh, M which can, uh, comes from the um, uh, this, this part over here gives you the MVV and that's the V over there. So there you are, that is what this looks like. The DDT is replaced by these, this part over here and we have, and now you have to find the first non-zero contribution. So the first non-zero, con if uh, at this rate you have a, at this stage you have a three, point, uh, three fees and that's going to give you zero. So you have to go one step in perturbation theory. One of the V's has to be expressed in terms of the uh, uh, coupling constant, the G and two V's. Once you have that, here you are, the lowest order transfer rate, you have two M's, uh, G and two, four V's, and the four V's become two correlators, and you carry out the same uh, uh, um, accounting, which we did before, a minute ago, that you pick up a D, two D's from here and a two from here, uh, so that it is uh, 2M, uh, 2D plus two, and then you have uh, one over M from here, one over K to the power M, one over K to the power M, that's your 2M, and then there is a one over K to the power Z, that's your Z. So 2M plus Z on this side, 2D plus, so new, uh, denominator has 2M plus Z, 2D plus two in the numerator, it has to be zero, and therefore epsilon is K independent, and you say, uh, well, there I have two Z plus M uh, equal to. Uh, so uh, scale independent energy transfer gives you this. Previously I had this, the total energy is given by this and uh, all that you do need to do now is essentially uh, find Z and M. And as soon as you uh, do that, you find that three M is three D plus two and M is equal to D plus two by three, and it is uh, uh, D plus, so uh, in D my, uh, as, as soon as you look at the integ E of, E is integral E K D K, E K D K, E K therefore has this K to the power D minus one, the C of K gave you this, and therefore E of K is K to the power minus one. So that's the argument. There was a why. I, I, I still don't have it. I don't have the why. This is an argument without the why. Yeah, yeah. This is an argument without the why. So this is just saying that C is like one over k to the power m, and the relaxation rate is k to the power n. So no. Yeah. Why will come in a minute. So. That, that, that's it, you have your k to the power minus five by three. And now uh, the point is, what's, um, uh, is there, how, where, where can, can what, what, what are the possible problems? One of the big problems is the rate of energy transfer across scales is independent of the scale. And so, but now you see the energy transfer uh, can be expressed as an integral and therefore the, independent a number means that whatever it is at the end of the day, the integral has to look like this. Something, some d to the power d can be anything, not really the dimensionality, but just 
uh, p and then a p to the power d. If it was anything else over here, instead of d, it would be a diamond, it would be dependent on the um, uh, wave number. But the point is, it is not dependent on the wave number, and uh, but there is a log which you have uh, to evaluate this kind of, I would have to put a cutoff. There has to be a cutoff, otherwise this integral is going to blow up. And what, so this is something which was realized as early as 1973, Leslie's book uh, does this very explicitly and then runs into this issue. And then make, uh, he uses a, a, a trick, which says that, look, I mean, this K0 is after all arbitrary. So let's put a distribution on the K0. So you put a K0, evaluate the, uh, <clears throat> the cutoff, uh, evaluate the integral with the cutoff, and then say the cutoff has a distribution, take a Gaussian distribution, find the average, and you get a number. That was Leslie's trick. A uh, lot of discussion. So that's all the, if you want a present day discussion, it is uh, Mahindra Verma's text, um, um, uh, which has a, um, uh, uh, but here is a issue. Now comes the, and so what, why, so why is Martin de Dominicis, so this is without worrying about the Martin de Dominicis uh, 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 picture where they actually um, uh, put in a form for this f of alpha. So the Martin de Dominis is all that we have done before till now is there was no form for f of alpha. We assumed a form for the relaxation rate that it goes as k to the power n and the inte frequency integral of the correlator goes as one over k to the power m. Didominesis and Martin put in this uh, thing over here, and that has a very, a very good reason as I understand it. Uh, Kolmogorov in this model works out at y equal to four. This model is devised to do a perturbation theory around y equal to zero. It would seem a little, I mean, you want it at y equal to four, and why do you take a model where it is going to be a perturbation around y equal to zero? There is very good reason for this. And, and, uh, and now once you do this, you see it is reminiscent of critical phenomena where the phenomenon happens in d equal to three, but most of us are very happy to do a perturbation theory around d equal to four and use the parameter epsilon equal to four minus d as the expansion parameter around epsilon equal to zero. Well, the only difference is you expand around epsilon equal to zero and want the answer at epsilon equal to one, Didominesis and Martin expand around y equal to zero and want the answer at y equal to four. So that that's um, uh, that, that, all right. But the philosophy, uh, I think, remains the same. So uh, you go ahead and do the same thing once again and uh, the same equation. And now you have to do a, a, a same power counting. It is gamma of k is proportional to k to the power z. Now you don't need any, because the correlator, you don't need any m. The correlator is given. The correlator is g, g, and this p to the power four minus d minus y. g is one over um, um, <coughs> in, uh, uh, sigma. So G is one over sigma, that gives you um, uh, the, uh, uh, so this Z over here, and then there is the minus two Z coming from the fact that there are two Gs and then this, there is a D plus two coming from this, and there is this correlator giving you this. And Z is two minus Y, my, uh, y over three. So this is just the same power counting that I had shown you before, 
and Kolmogorov is z equal to two by three, and that means y equal to four. So, when, uh, so y equal to four in the Didomenes Martin model is Kolmogorov, and your perturbation theory uh, does very well around y equal to zero. So now the point is that all right, y equal to four, I mean, is at some kind of a end point of um, acceptability. And if you go think back on the look back on the critical phenomena, the point was that critical phenomena where there are these large scale fluctuations and at the critical point, the fluctuations are strongly correlated. The correlation length diverges as t minus tc to the power minus nu. The exponent is half in mean field theory. Experiments give something like 0.63. So there is, uh, so you now go back to the starting point and mean field theory said that replace the, uh, in, uh, the phi, which is the variable phi square, m square is for, uh, by um, <coughs> average value, minimize. Uh, so that's the Landau way of doing things and you pick up a half for this uh, new. Uh, uh, and the, uh, uh, the Wilson flow, is what uh, uh, came in the 70s, that you do this renormalization group flow and you have uh, the uh, M square, which is the uh, temperature flowing along this, the coupling constant flows like this, and you get, uh, but uh, uh, which is for, uh, there would be corrections, at a, but at epsilon equal to one, you have a much better answer than you had before. But epsilon equal to zero, epsilon equal to zero, which is at d equal to four, you have a problem. That is where what is called marginality, this flow over here has lost, the fixed point is gone, the non-trivial fixed point which you get out of this, uh, the same kind of non-trivial fixed point which Dhruva had been talking about, uh, you have a, non-trivial fixed point here for epsilon positive, gone for zero, and now the correlation function, if you try to work out, has a logarithmic correction. It's the mean field answer, which is this t to the power minus half, and then there is a logarithmic correction. All right, so the, with the Martin Didominis's model, the, um, uh, it was the renormalization group was brought in by Yakut and Orzag. So Yakut and Orzag, I'll be in, uh, uh, through in five, uh, five minutes. I have 15 minutes. Oh. Huh, yeah. So, um, uh, all right. So uh, you now have a <clears throat> uh, issue that and uh, the, uh, what is the, um, uh, so what are we going to do? You are going, to, what you are going to do is what did Yakot and Orzak do in this situation? What they did was they played the game which uh, Wilson played on um, uh, this Ginsburg Landau Hamiltonian and which I'm sure most of you are um, aware of very well that uh, you want to treat this, you, you want the answer at very long wavelengths. The critical phenomena that you are interested in is at, uh, is a question of the correlation length becoming very big. You are not interested in the small, what is happening at the small length scales and Therefore, it is an um, uh, interesting thing uh, to, uh, it, therefore, it is interesting to remove the uh, small wavelengths from the problem, integrate them out, get a new free energy, which is expressed only in terms of the smaller wave numbers, that is, in terms of the larger length scales. If you try to do that, then it is the M, you are going to 
restrict yourself, you will try to reduce this to the same uh, structure. And uh, with a new M prime, with a new M, which is let's say M prime, and a new U, which is let's say uh, U prime. This will be possible. You see the procedure, as soon as you do this, you are going to generate all other powers of pi. And this procedure will make sense if the coefficients that you generate with, for example, let's say, with phi to the power six, you generate this coefficient over here, but this coefficient vanishes. If L tends to infinity, if this happens, then you are uh, doing very well you have a flow for M and you have a flow for U and that flow will take you to larger and larger length scales. And ultimately, uh, when you reach the fixed point, you have a critical, you are at the critical point, you have an infinite correlation length and you perturb about the fixed point and pick up the exponent nu over here. That's exactly what was done. That gives you, that is exactly what was implemented by Wilson. And it was established that for epsilon, which is D minus um, uh, four minus D, uh, uh, epsilon positive, uh, the, all the terms like this phi to the power six, they had coefficients which vanished in the long wavelength limit. And you get this answer, which is nu equal to half into. Uh, for so, um, uh, what if epsilon uh, is negative? But if epsilon is negative, so epsilon uh, greater than zero, you have Wilson, uh, uh, Fisher, um, uh, so on. Epsilon less than zero, you have mean field, which is Landau, and. Uh, at epsilon equal to zero, that is the no man's land. That's the no man's land where you have to rethink the problem and the result of it is that you pick up a log over here. So now comes this question that um, the um, uh, philosophy over here, which uh, the Yakut uh, Orzag uh, Yakut business was that you have these large length scales L and you have a short length scale, uh, let's say, which is eta, and you are making a commitment. Kolmogorov range was K, which is a wave number, which is smaller than this eta over here and is larger than the one, uh, one over L. That was Kolmogorov. The, this picture over here, on the other hand, is like the Wilson picture, where you are essentially looking at the k equal to zero fixed point. So you know, one, one, and th th this is something which one uh, needs to keep in mind whenever one talks about turbulence. It is not as clear cut as critical phenomena is. Critical phenomena wanted a k equal to zero fixed point and got it. Over here, the k equal to zero fixed point is an idealization. You needed something which was in this range over here. Uh, you opt for this one uh, because the because that that it's something you can do. All right. So and if you are lucky, it will work. So all right, and uh, that, that's the um, uh, uh, picture. That that's what um, the um, uh, 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 thing is. And so you accept that the expansion around this is valid, and you uh, uh, get, as I said, that it is um, uh, z equal to uh, two minus uh, y by three, and uh, that seems to work at y equal to four. But now comes the, uh, how, so how did you, comes the question of the coefficient. 
You see, this is the last thing that I want to uh, uh, talk about a bit. There was the question in this Kolmogorov business that there is supposedly a C and then there is a K to the power minus five thirds and a epsilon to the power. And there is this C which has to be calculated. The two minus, <coughs> This two minus y over three for z is um, uh, uh, the z is the relaxation rate gamma to the power a, and which is supposed to be two by three for Kolmogorov and y equal to four gives you this at um, uh, z equal to two by three. But the question remains uh, that uh, do I in this process the process by which I got this y, which is through the elimination of modes and looking at recursion relation, uh, which is not, um, uh, which was not explicitly done by De Nerminesis and Martin because they were very um, uh, skeptical, while it seemed a very um, a good way of bypassing the energy integral. So you see the point with Didominesis and Martin, you get a Kolmogorov without actually invoking the picture of the, uh, the way I did it at first, I used two scaling laws, energy const transfer constant and the uh, self-consistency of the um, uh, perturbation theory and got the um, uh, five by three. Why, by putting in this parameter y and using uh, um, uh, arguments which are self-consistent, Didominesis and Martin realize, uh, could get the using two by three as the signature of Kolmogorov. They could see that their model at y equal to four is Kolmogorov. But they also realize that if I have to do a calculation. For example, if I want to get this gamma naught over here, then I have to actually do a, a, a <coughs> calculation which is based around y equal to zero. So they could do a perturbation theory around y equal to zero for the coefficient of this gamma to get the calculate get the coefficient gamma naught over here. Uh, or what in critical phenomena would be amplitude ratios. They would not be picking up gamma zero, but a combination which is essentially the C zero over gamma zero squared. So it is gamma zero squared over C zero, and they would be getting a number for it, a one loop answer or two loop over there, but it is a number. They could pick up a number over there, and um, uh, the, uh, you could um, uh, take, do a perturbation theory around y equal to zero, put y equal to four when nobody is looking, and you can uh, uh, say that I have got a number. They avoided all discussion about the energy transfer rate uh, because as they very clearly said that there are marginal operators in the problem. Y equal to four is marginal. So and, uh, this is what um, uh, gets related, I <clears throat> uh, think, to the fact that when we did the integral for the energy experiment, it reduced to Kolmogorov, that is epsilon is scale free in the form that it is an integral which has as many powers in the numerator as in the denominator, leaving the question of log unsaid. So, uh, uh, the, all right, if I were to accept the Didominesis Martin business as that, it gives you this. And if you say that the energy transfer rate gives you this with a uh, log thrown in over here, then the uh, uh, energy spectrum would, the k to the power minus five by three would have a log in the coefficient. And that would mean that this C, which I introduced happily for the coefficient over here, is not a universal constant. In fact, it says that if you look at the data very carefully, or if it is possible at all, then there should be a 
change in the uh, coefficient. So, well, it, uh, th th this is uh, uh, now just to the, uh, what, what, what about Yakut and Odzag? Yakut and Odzag uh, clearly mention that y equal to four is marginal and yet they uh, do calculate the coefficient C, um, uh, uh, C over here. That seems to me to be a conflict of interest uh, uh, that, that, that you don't have, uh, as soon as you say y equal to four marginal, you have to be uh, led, you ha and, uh, and have to get um, uh, log in it. Uh, and well, this could be right, it could be wrong, or it could be what generally in this business of one often sees vaguely right, that is, I mean, if you are willing to close your eyes to certain things, then you are right. Otherwise, it may not be so right. And uh, that, that um, uh, allows the field to thrive. So um, uh, with that, um, uh, I would um, uh, like to end. There were a couple of other niceties which are um, uh, interesting along the way, which I have uh, not talked about. But uh, this is a good time to end uh, if I want to end in time. So thank you very much. Thank you. You can give a nice talk.